You've opened the door to the general's domain. A broom closet full of wonders. Beyond the plungers, brooms, and unknown items of disgust. Our memories of the past. The memories you are about to hear are not for the faint of heart. The memories are meant for mature audiences only. Listening discretion is advised. Prepare yourself for the tales of the janitor. I never did understand spray painting grass. But hey, if they want a green, I guess I'll paint a green. I wonder if they'd like it if I painted it um, all pink or brown <laughs> or, or even red. Well, <laughs> maybe not red. I've seen way too much red on grass already. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, get off my... Lo- oh, <laughs> sorry about that. It's you again. You found me. Welcome to the Elijah Hand Building. Elijah came here from Indiana and was an undertaker and furniture maker. These skills were fairly common together as the undertakers were responsible for making the coffins. What made Elijah special is that he was doing a new art called embalming. He was the only embalmer in Orlando. His business became so successful that he built this building next to us. The undertaking was done on the first floor and the furniture store was on the second story. Rumor has it that his business was doing so well that he would put the dead bodies on the empty beds and sofas until he could attend to them. (laughs) I know, I know. I should have been a history teacher. Our first story takes us to Key West. Do you want to play with dolls? There's some I want to show you in Key West. (laughs) Father, do you know what time it is? Let me check. It is exactly 11.45. My father said he was going to be here at 11.50. Do I look all right? You look like my wife. Do you think he'll like this house? It doesn't matter what he thinks about the house. Go get William. Yes, sir. Where's my pipe, mother? It's in the study. Much obliged. William, are you ready for your party, dear? Tell that child of yours to hurry up. He's almost ready. I'm just fixing his hair. I'll get it. It's probably your father. Good day, sir. Good day, Robert. Where is Mabel and William? They're upstairs. They'll be down in a moment. Let me get your hat. Get you a drink. So what did the little woman make for this birthday? She made a roast and a salad, I do believe. I don't know why she's always making the rabbit food. Just give me the meat and maybe a big slice of cake. I agree with you. I don't even know why we're having a party to begin with. I agree. The boy is old enough to work. He should be working, not having parties. I'm hoping that this birthday party nonsense is just a fad and will go away as quickly as it came in. It may be a fad, but I think it will stay around for some time. Fads usually cling on longer than we like. (laughs) Next you'll be telling me that we'll be eating ice cream not in something other than a bowl. Well, just last week, my company bought the patent for something called the ice cream cone. Aha! Save your stories for the little one. In fact, here he comes now. Sorry, we're running late. I had to fix his hair. Good day, William. I don't know what the protocol is, so I'm just going to give this to you now if that is all right with your mom and dad. You might as well get it now. Makes no never mind to me. Here you go then, William. I picked this up the last time I went to Germany. I think you're losing it, old-timer. That's a doll. It's not just any doll. It's a doll from me. What do you say, William? Thank you, sir. Birthdays are like trains. You are ahead of time, on time, or behind time. Where are you? 
Why don't you put your gift in your room and then we can eat? Good. I'm hungry. What would you men like to drink? A cup of coffee is just fine for me. Coffee sounds good. Well, if you just take a seat, I'll bring everything out to you. William, can you come in here and help me? Oh, coming, Mother. I hope the roast is tender. Doesn't matter to me. Sometimes a home-cooked meal is all you need. It doesn't necessarily have to be good. A good woman should be able to make a good meal, in my opinion. Soon, you will learn that just eating with a woman is all you need. You're just saying that because Grandma passed last year. You don't need to lose a woman to know that she's special. Here's the food. Be careful, William. Don't spill the coffee. You can drop that off right in front of me. I think I'll put it right here. I need to grab the salad. Here, William. Let me take my coffee. In fact, I'll grab your father's as well. Thank you, Grandfather. William, I thought your mother told you to put your doll away. I did, Father. I put him in my room. Don't lie to your father. He did put it away. I saw him take it upstairs. Is it me? Or did it have that smile before? Take it back upstairs. Now. Yes, sir. Why on earth did you get him a doll? Because if you think about it, dolls are... Well, they are a lot like small dead people. <laughs> He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. <laughs> oh, Robert the doll is allegedly a haunted doll that is located now in the Martello Museum in Key West. According to the legend, the doll has supernatural abilities, which allow it to move, change facial expressions, and make sounds. Ooh. Supposedly, the doll has caused car accidents, bones to be broken, job loss, divorce, and so many more misfortunes. <laughs> Next time you get the chance to visit Key West, I think it'd be a good idea to pay your respect to Robert. Shall we head across the bridge? Wachula is just over there. Good day, Leva. Good day, Abraham. I see that the Lord has blessed us with another beautiful day. He has indeed. Where are you off to on this fine day? I am on my way to Mrs. Jefferson's house. She is expecting once again. Again? Lordy. That must be the fifth child. Six, actually. Hopefully this one is healthy. We shall pray that it is. I won't keep you then. Thank you. And a fine day to you. Do you have everything you need? Don't you worry, Mrs. Uh. Jefferson. I have delivered many a child to the Lord. Starting to come, I feel. Lie down, Mrs. Jefferson. I'll get everything I need. Okay, Mrs. Jefferson. It's almost time. I'm ready to have this baby out of me. Okay. You've done this before. You know what to do. Even so, I'm scared. Don't be scared, dear. I am right here with you. I trust you. I'm ready to begin. Okay. Let us bring this child into the world. <laughs> so big! Keep going, Mrs. Jefferson. You're doing oh. just fine. <laughs> I can't. Okay, Mrs. Jefferson, I see the head. Oh, oh, oh I can't. Come on, ah, Mrs. Jefferson. There ah, you go, Mrs. Jefferson. Say hello ah, to your baby daughter. Hello, baby girl. Ah. Let me clean her up and check her out. 
Is everything all right? Yes, everything looks fine. Just cleaning her up. Oliver? What happened? I'm sorry, Mrs. Jefferson. She just stopped breathing. No, 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 no. It, it, it can't be. I don't understand. Sometimes there is no explanation. Save her! I'll go get the bucket. How could this have happened? Why did the Lord take away my child after he already taken away my last one? Why, God? Why? Why have you done this to me? You. You did this. Did it you? Think about the mouths you have to feed, Mrs. Jefferson. Get out! Get out of my house! I will take my leave now, Mrs. Jefferson. And I'll take care of the baby. Why, oh Lord? Why have you let this happen? I'm so sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord, for what I have done. I do this in your name. These women are too loose and there are too many mouths to feed. They won't be able to feed them all. I'm sorry, but I know I did right by this child. Rest now, child, for I have saved you. And his love was in Egypt's land. Let my people go. Oppressed so hard they couldn't stand. Let my people go. This story started almost 175 years ago. The story goes as a former slave woman from Georgia came down to Florida to be a midwife. She supposedly delivered over 100 babies for the community. Being concerned about the families already having too many mouths to feed, she'd eliminate some of them by smothering. She would then take them to the bridge to bury them. One of the stories has her fallen off the bridge where the river then ran with blood for days afterwards. During the nights on a full moon, you can put a bucket in the water and take out what looks like blood. (laughs) Some brave soul will try to test so-called bloody someday. (laughs) Would you visit this bridge? While you think that over, you'd better start packing. We're going to school in Jacksonville. Math will be the least of your problems there. (laughs) Settle down, class. Settle down! Okay. Where did we leave off in our story of Henry V? We finished Act 4, Scene 2, sir. Ah, yes. And now the bard comes in and says... We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother, be he ne'er so vile. This day shall gentle his condition, 
and gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves accursed they were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap while any speaks, that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day. Now what was that passage about? Mr. Faulkner, he was trying to give courage to his men to fight, even though they were outnumbered. Wendy, is that skirt too short? No, sir. It's six inches, like the rules say it should be. Stand up. It's six inches, Mr. Faulkner. Let me measure it. Come here. Hmm, let's see. Ah, that is only five and seven eighths. Bend over. Mr. Faulkner? Bend over now. Mr. Faulkner. Pull that skirt up. Please, Mr. Faulkner. Lift it up. Higher. Higher, (laughs) I said. Please, Mr. Faulkner. I think you did this on purpose. (laughs) You enjoy getting slapped. (laughs) Oh, you can't kid me. Please, Mr. Faulkner. (laughs) Please, Mr. Faulkner, stop. I'm starting to enjoy this. (laughs) Now, go to the principal's office and tell him how much of a fast girl you are. Yes, Mr. Faulkner. Okay, class, now that that is out of the way, let's continue with the lesson. Brian, what do you think Shakespeare... I don't want to visit the principal. It's six inches. He just wanted to see my knickers. One moment. (laughs) Come in. Oh, Miss Natsum, what can I do for you? Why is your room covered in plastic? (laughs) I was getting ready to paint my office. (laughs) What color were you going to pick? I was thinking of red. Blood red. Now, why are you here, little miss? Mr. Faulkner said that my skirt was too short. Yes, well, it does look short to me, Miss Natzel. What did he measure it as? Five and seven eighths, sir. Well, that is too short, Miss Natzel. What punishment did he give you? He gave me four slaps, sir. Where did he slap you? On the buttocks, sir. Mm -hmm. I bet that hurt, Miss Natsu. Let me take a look at it. Sir, should you do that without a nurse? Um, Miss Natsu, let me take a look. Okay. I see. The redness is fine. Is it tender? Ouch. Oh, I see it is tender. Oh. Oh. Smells ripe too. Mr. Harmer, I'm getting uncomfortable. I would really like to see the nurse. Not until I hand out my punishment. Please, sir. I don't I don't want to get slapped again. I wasn't talking about slapping. What punishment were you talking about, sir? Oh, one that I'll enjoy deeply and often. Please bend over. Mr. Harmer? Turn around, Miss Natzel. This will only take a moment. 
Yes, I think this will do nicely. Yes, yes. Blood red will look nice. The Devil School is what this place was known as. This school building has been known for many tales, but sometimes the truth is even weirder. In the 1960s, the furnace blew up and killed half the students, a few faculty members, and the, uh, the janitor. Ghosts have been seen, and, and even a priest was brought in to exercise the building. The story you just heard was about a principal who was a cannibal and kept his meat in a closet that he converted into a meat locker in his office. Oh... The students were gutted and hung on spikes until he could eat them. There are other stories around the principal and the janitor <laughs> uh, going on a killing spree, covering the hallways in blood. Mm -mm. Recently, the building was gutted and planned on turning it into condos. If you're looking for a new house, <laughs> there might be one available soon. I hope you like red. <laughs> and perhaps more. Our next story takes us to Pensacola, where we will see the light. Ah. I'm finally back from town. Maybe I should be the one to go to town. What do you know about shopping and getting supplies? I've been with you for years. I know what to get for this lovely lighthouse. And for you. It's a nice day out, isn't it? Yeah, it's another day. I wish you would have a more positive outlook. Is that so? What did you do when I was gone? I cleaned the floors. Doesn't this lighthouse look beautiful? Looks like a lighthouse to me. I wish you would treat her better. Treat who better? <sighs> never mind. You never care. All I care is that the lot works when I need it to work. There's so much more to her than just the light. I see. Looks like there's a storm coming. You always say that. I'm right some of the time. I think we should look into getting more flowers for the inside. How many times do I have to tell you, woman? This is just a lighthouse. She could be much more if you let her. <sighs> I'm gonna go change the wick. Why don't you dispose of the old one? What do you want for dinner? It doesn't matter to me. Do you want soup? We have soup almost every day. It's easy to make and it lasts a few days. I just changed the bulb. Can you clean the lenses? I'll go get more fuel. Jeremiah, seriously, why don't you take better care of her? I bet you would enjoy it if you gave her a little time and cleaned her up instead of just using her like you do. What are you talking about? Her? It's a lighthouse. We are here to do a job, and this lighthouse is going to do it. If you treat her right, she'll end up treating you right. You have lost your mind, woman. You can stay here and clean her. I'm going to grab the oil. It's okay, honey. I'm here, and I'll make you shine so bright. You say something. Just talking to the lighthouse. There we go. All nice and clean now. Now you can shine your beacon of love on all that witness it. Uh, this should be enough to last the first couple of hours. Look what you've done. You did that on purpose. Relax. So I spilled a little. I just cleaned that. Now you can do it again. You just don't love her like I do. It's a lot house. That's all. Just a building with a lot on it. She's more than that if you let her be. I'm going to get some sleep before the storm. Wake me up when dinner is ready. If you want to clean up my mess, that would be just dandy. I'm always cleaning up your mess. You have never taken care of her. Her? This is a lot house. Nothing more. See? It's not a being. Don't you dare hit her. Like this? Stop it. 
Ah, what are you gonna do with that? Are you gonna fix me? You? No, you are beyond repair. Listen here, you stupid woman. No, you listen. Come on. What are you going to do? Something that I should have done a long time ago. <sighs> I'll clean him up later. Let me take care of you first. He won't hurt you anymore. I'm here. I'll always be here. No one ever saw the couple much together. Jeremiah would come to town alone when he picked up the supplies. When Jeremiah died, most people believed that he became ill. Police were sent to investigate and saw blood stains and blood trails leading into other rooms. She was never convicted though as they couldn't find enough evidence against her. She then took over caring for the lighthouse until her death. People now hear laughter, footsteps, breathing noises, and items becoming magically clean. I once heard lighthouses are not just stone, brick, metal, and glass. There's a human story at every lighthouse. <laughs> That's the story you just heard. There are many lighthouse stories, and I'm sure I'll tell you more, but not today. <laughs> today we'll end this stop of our journey in Miami. Someone is going to make an interesting discovery, it seems. <laughs> Thank you for taking me out to dinner. Anytime. I think this is our room. Our love room? It may not be much, but it is a start. The start of us? Oh, we started a while ago, if I remember correctly. Fooling around wasn't when we started. True, but no one raindrop starts to flood. What does that mean? It means that it takes a lot to start something, whether good or bad. Well, I know that you're bad for me. But I thought you liked the bad boys. Oh, I do. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> so, does this room come with anything to drink? No, this place is too cheap for that. But fear not, I brought a bottle. Something strong, I hope. It cost more than the room did, so I hope so. Oh, you big spender. Anything for you, my love. Anything? Anything. Interesting. Let me pour you a glass. Here you go. Shall we toast? I'm not good at making toasts. To the land we love, and the love we land. So is it good? It's hard. Just the way I like it. Well, I'm getting there. Why don't I remove some clothes and slip into something more comfortable? That might help you get there a little faster. It definitely wouldn't hurt. You look so sexy. And just think, I could do this for you every night. Not soon enough, my dear. We have tonight. It's a start. It's your raindrop. <laughs> Why don't you put on some music? I'm gonna go freshen up. I still can't believe we're doing this. Are you having second thoughts? Hell no. I love you. And I love you too. Do you think he has any idea? Nope. And I don't care. I told him I'm on a business trip. Now are we here to talk about him or do you want to do something else? Oh, definitely something else. Why don't you come over here then? With pleasure. Feels like I'm dreaming. 
Here, let me help you take your clothes off. You look hot. I am sweating. I think that would be a good idea. I shall start at the top and work my way down. Why don't you get on the bed and I'll remove your pants? With pleasure. Now, let's see what you have under here. God, Jake! It's not me. This bed stinks. Oh God, Jake, look under the bed. Rose, this is a dead body. What should we do? You should get dressed and leave. I'm, I'm not leaving you. If you stay, your husband will find out that you were here with me. Oh, he's gonna find out soon enough anyway. Not if you leave now. Jake, you're not listening. He's gonna find out in about eight months. Are you? Yes. I would like to report a murder. Yes, I'm at the Traveler's Hotel near the Miami International Airport, room 118. I'm with my future wife. We haven't touched the body. Stories of finding bodies under the beds at hotels are common. How did the bodies get there? What happened to them? The details change every time you hear the stories. <laughs> Have you ever shared a room with a corpse? <laughs> I find it ironic that the state song is old folks at home. Maybe it's because they never want to leave. <laughs> you know that you're getting old when everything hurts, and what doesn't hurt just doesn't work. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the stories of the Sunshine State, even though it rains almost every day here. Since we're near the airport, I might as well take my leave of you. I will see you all next at the Kinnishaw House. I hope you find me.